Welcome to this podcast, Holistic Creators, where we share our unique and universal stories about shaping the future for the four Ps, people, planet, purpose, and profit. My name is Manet Kunze. I'm a mental coach and your host of this show. My intention for this show is to inspire you on your path to a holistic future. So welcome. Hello and welcome to my podcast, Holistic Creators. My name is Wanette and I'm your host. Today, my guest is Nira Roche. Nira is an everyday biohacking mentor, helping women over the age of 42 reclaim their vitality, ease and emotional stability. So welcome to my show. Thank you, Swanette. It's lovely being here. Yes. Sharing, <laughs> sharing a cup of, a cup of water. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, make yourself comfortable. And um, I'm, I'm really interested in uh, hearing about your own story. So you, you're looking so beautiful uh, right now, but it hasn't been this way uh, uh, for a long time. Can you tell us a little bit about your story what is your transformation that you have been through um well at the age of 12 i developed a joint that started to get very hot and very stiff and um and it was a condition that basically eroded the joints and that kind it started off with one joint in my, my knee and then it just went throughout my body in about six months and so from the age of 12 I haven't been haven't had the best and it wasn't just the joints it was the total exhaustion <laughs> it was I barely got to through school and I'd come home and I would um I would go to bed and have a good sleep and and that continued even in my working life uh, which was very short but in my working life <clears throat> I remember times when I drive home I turn off the car in engine and just sleep for two hours before I had the energy to get inside the house and as I at times when <clears throat> I was I was uh, in a in a active phase, a very active phase of the uh, condition. Then there would be times when I wouldn't. I'd just have a shower, and that was my activity for the day. The rest of the day, I would sleep. I'd eat my food in bed. Um, my food would be given to me by my mother and uh, then my husband um, so there were times that were really bad and and as I grew up I wanted to find ways to basically to have enough energy just to read a book because there was a time that I couldn't read a paragraph and so I've always searched for hacks or ways that I can change my lifestyle because, because our bodies are so miraculously amazing. <laughs> and, and if you look down, down, down into the cells and into the DNA, our DNA, when they can literally in tune, they literally have different frequencies and it's like uh, they are in tune like a piano. And when they're out of tune, then we have all these complications <laughs> and and our body tells us we're not in tune with aches, pains, ex tiredness, um, sleep disturbances. Uh, there is so many ways and I'm sure the listeners will, their bodies are communicating to them and saying things that isn't quite right, that they would love for it to go away. And, and one of the ways to address that would be to listen to the body and try and figure out what is it that's out of tune? What is it that's um, creating this symptom, basically? 
Yeah, so, but normally what I hear is that uh, as soon as people get pain or you know, the body is uh, communicating in whatever way, they uh, go to the doctor and get some uh, medicine to uh, eliminate the symptoms, often not even understanding what the source of the problem is and definitely not listening to the body. So uh, what, what can they do? How can they listen to their body before they even perhaps go to the doctor and figure out, okay, what, what is really here happening? What, what do I feel inside? Do we have any idea about that? Well, that's, that's where it comes back to educating yourself. And um, if they followed me on Recovering Leopard, that's my Facebook page, Recovering Leopard, because I'm trying to recover my speed, my um, strength and my flexibility. And so that's why I've called myself Recovering Leopard, because I see a leopard as being very much all those qualities. So it's that kind of um, may shorten some of the listeners uh, searching for what may be creating that. They can always uh, send me a message if they wanted to. But I don't really mentor people on a one-to-one -one basis. It's all done uh, through Facebook and um, uh, and but there is there are so many things that they can do because if you think back basically what i had to do and probably many other others before me have to, done is thought back well how did we used to live when how did we used to live uh, maybe 200 300 years ago how did we live then and start following that that is probably the basics of what it is that I'm teaching or I'm sharing or encouraging people to do is is to start uh, peeling back the layers to how we were <laughs> what we were doing when we were um, two three hundred years ago can you get a little bit more precise what you mean how we have been like, I, I have an idea, well, but uh, what is your idea about that? Okay. Well, firstly, we would wake up with the birds and we would go to bed with the birds because we didn't have electricity um, that was, and if we did, it was probably only limited to very few people. But if we go back before that, we, we went to bed early and we, were <clears throat> and we got up early and we were following our circadian rhythm our biological clocks are set in a 12 hours 12 hours when there is this rest and rejuvenate phase and 12 hours when it's in this active and um and ready for us to go out and hunt and gather so it's very much set to that, even though our whole lives has changed, we biologically within ourselves, we are still operating on that circadian rhythm. So when we first get up, a very simple hack, simple for those of us that have access to sunlight, I suppose, is to get sunlight into our eyes and whether that is um, not directly looking at it, but to be present without our sunglasses outside for 15, 20 minutes. If you don't have 15, 20 minutes to, to well, I actually shut my eye, I close my eyes and I will turn my head in what, in so that I get different angles of light falling onto my, uh, eyelids and I'll also blink very fast very very fast just and be turning my head and also rotating my eyes just trying to get light onto my eyes um, if you've only got a minute if it's a minute between getting or if you're driving leave your sunglasses off the earlier we do it the better it stops our um, 
melatonin, that's our sleep hormone. And it resets at that point, it resets that whole clock so that we can sleep easier at night and a deeper sleep is so vital for so many functions of our body. It's that is when we actually lose weight, believe it or not, we can lose weight because um, there is activity going on. There's a whole orchestra of beautifully tuned hormonal activity going on at night. And one of them is, and, and fat is being burnt at that time. And when that beautiful orchestra is disrupted because we're not getting deep sleep, then we have all sorts of health consequences. And that could include weight gain. You know, especially women that are coming on to perimenopause, menopause and postmenopause, they're the ones that are going to fight, be most deeply affected. All of us are, but they're the ones because their other hormones are starting to go through the natural process of waning. Mm, okay, so you said having a good biorhythm of sleeping and uh, being active, and this is connected with sunlight, but also with the hormones. Now you said melatonin uh, for having a deep sleep at night. Uh, what, what else would be important? Um, like what, what I hear sometimes is that people say to me they drink a lot, but they don't drink water or like quality water, but whatever, no other drinks that are sugared. What about water? Is this also important for us? Sugary water is probably the, sugary fluids is probably one of the most damaging things we can do for ourselves. Um, it's, it puts us on, on a roller coaster up and down, up and down of insulin, which um, it, it just puts us, our whole body into havoc. This up and down process, we need to eat more, we need, because when we dip, uh, we have to eat more. Sugar is so damaging on so many levels. On a cellular level, it's, it's just damaging for us. And water is absolutely vital. We are I mean, I really, really, the listeners, if they could think about it, what do they think about when I say, think about a stagnant pool? How does it smell? What does it look like? Would you go for a swim in it? And yet, Are you drinking enough water to keep that, to change that so that there isn't a stagnant pool? Because we are, what is it, Swanet, 70, 80% water? And when, when that water stagnates, our cells are bathed. They're swimming in that Ooh. and to keep it flowing we need to have water not excess water you just need to keep yourself hydrated and some people are worried oh if I drink a heap of water I need to keep going to the bathroom a hack for that is just add a pinch and I mean the smallest pinch of salt to it good quality Himalayan salt is the one that I use and I recommend. Um, that I believe energizes the water, but it also adds the electrolytes that we need. And it makes the water much more absorbable by the body, by the by our cells. So we don't have to keep running to the bathroom because it's not being absorbed. And We just need to keep running off. It does decrease the number of times you visit the bathroom, but still you're getting 
uh, hydrated and especially uh, air hostesses or people that are working in air conditioning, they will notice a huge difference. Uh, my son-in-law came, when I first started doing this hack, my son-in-law dropped by and his response was, wow, what are you doing? I mean, at the moment, it's probably a little bit dehydrated because it has been a couple of days since I've been doing that. But it's it was noticeable to him. It's like, wow, what are you doing? Your skin is just looking amazing. Now, this is my son-in-law that probably doesn't pay that much attention to, to anybody's skin or anybody how especially his mother-in-law is looking, <laughs> might pay that much attention to my daughter. But, but um, so it's, it can make a dramatic difference. It can make a dramatic difference to how we look. It can make a dramatic difference to how we feel. Yeah, and uh, I have uh, seen the picture uh, of you. You were so friendly and showed up so vulnerable. Uh, how you looked like um, when you have been in the state of being sick and seeing you now shining like that, it is really a massive uh, change. So how, how, did, yeah. how, how do people um, react normally when they know you from before and know you uh, right now? Can they see this kind of difference? You already said your um, son-in-law registered it. Or registered <laughs> it and oh, absolutely. That picture that I sent you, that was over five years ago. That and um i a friend of mine said that i looked about 80 years old then i'm sure there's some beautiful 80 year old women out there but i was a very sick looking 80 year old one that was probably in her last days in hospital and um and uh and it's been through biohacking that I've gotten to this to the stage I am now. I mean I've all I've biohacked for many, many years, but I what I did two years before that, I was probably in the best state that I've been in my adult life. That was because I made a change to my diet. I went onto a keto diet. Um, because it was promoted as uh, good for our health and it probably is good for people's health, pro just not menopausal women <laughs> and um, or perimenopausal women because the fat content in that oil, in that diet, is changed my whole gut bacteria. It took thousands of dollars worth of testing to find out why I rapidly declined. I declined rapidly within nine months. I, I went from being mobile to immobile, being turned in bed, almost being getting to the stage where I'm getting my hand up to my mouth to feed myself was a fight it was like this and um so ve looking very close to a nursing home my husband was on burnout and my memory started to go my hair started to turn gray my eyebrows started to turn gray so i was in a in a really, it was a great experience to go through so that I, I can share that and say, hey, look, just be wary. So what happened was my, uh, one of the tests, my wonderful, beautiful girlfriend, as well as a doctor, suggested to me was to do a stool analysis. So we sent the stool off to, I don't know whether it was America or Germany, and that was analyzed for gut bacteria. And the list was sent back here to Australia. And a, um, a specialist looked at that. He was a naturopathic specialist. 
And he read me like he was psychic. I, I, he'd never really, he'd never seen me before. This was just over a Zoom call and he was looking at my friend. And, um, and he said, uh, this person will be aging very fast. Her memory will be fading. Uh, and because her whole gut bacteria is now fat eating bacteria, or the majority, there's a small amount of um, the good probiotic bacteria in my gut that we all need to take care of. But the fat had totally taken over, and they were putting out endotoxins, toxins into my bloodstream that was aging me. And his recommendation was to cut out all fat, including coconut oil, and to just use olive oil. And that is my, if there is one change you make, it would be, please, don't eat anything other than olive oil. Especially perimenopausal, women menopausal and postmenopausal because the estrogen is waning and we're starting to experience joint discomfort and that helps us that the, the substances in the olive oil there's a lot of research behind this helps our joints so and I'll share with you another story because uh, this would have been this would have been after that episode and he said don't use anything other than olive oil. I um, started to develop so I was going quite well at that point, not fantastic, quite well. And but suddenly my feet started to get a lot of pain in it. And I took rest, but the pain never went. The pain never went for months. It seemed to just come on overnight. And then in the same way, it, it disappeared overnight. And I had to think, because we'd started traveling, and I had to really think, well, what is it? What was the change that I made? And I realized we'd been having um, feta cheese in an olive oil blend. There was not much olive oil in there at all. It took me a lot to get that information out of the company. But other oils are actually, especially vegetable oils, are inflammatory. They And inflammation doesn't have to be sore joints. Inflammation can just be so low grade that we just waking up feeling a bit foggy, um, we're tired, you know, and it can be so chronic for so long that we've gotten used to it. Oh, that's just us. But by just changing that, you may find that we have, you experience less, less aches and pains, less Inflammation that you're aging, you may find that the rate that you're aging at lowers. It may not be as dramatic for our listeners because they're probably not in the state that I was in. But that is the beauty of biohacking. That is the absolute beauty of biohacking is that we literally slow down our aging. We will age but it'll be much slower. Yeah, so, and this means these are kind of small changes to do it. It's not that you really need to totally change your lifestyle no? to uh, no. really, yeah, stop the process or reduce uh, the, the process of um, yeah, becoming or being sick, but also like uh, looking older, feeling older as our cells will always um, recover ourselves. So no, this is also important to understand that, um, that our cells have the ability to transform themselves again and again and again and recreate themselves again. So they, they have this kind of programming to 
help us staying healthy and uh, vital. So what do you think about how can we kind of talk to ourselves or communicate with ourselves by whatever, for example, using affirmations or whatever to uh, stay healthy? Do you use something like that? Do you communicate with yourself? I do. I, I do. I use a mind movie. Um, in the first thing in the morning, I, list, I watch a mind movie. Um, <clears throat> you can find it on YouTube. It is actually under a mind movie channel. And I watch, I've downloaded it. It's now part of my music. But it has a music behind it and it's got words and it says my body heals rapidly and fast and and it's giving images of how I would like to be in the next five, ten years, but or maybe even sooner. I I think depending on how receptive we are, our bodies can change quite rapidly. And um, and I say five, ten years because of the joint destruction is quite bad and major. And it is taking time for that to repair itself. But someone that's not in such a, a, a state where they require a carer, and I still do require a carer, then their progress is probably going to be much more rapid than mine. And um, and I absolutely believe in the power of the mind to talk to ourselves and to instruct it, to talk to our organs. But we, so that can help. But there's so many things that can help. You know, that's what that's a biohack. Watching a mind as soon as I wake up, I watch that a mind movie, and as just before I go to bed, there's actually two of them. They're only a few minutes long that I watch just before I go to sleep, I watch it again to give my mind those suggestions that you're healing and you're healing rapidly and and uh, how I want to be feeling inside me, how much energy I want and all those beautiful things, you know, how much how I want to move and, yeah, so our minds are amazing. They're, it's powerful. Hmm. You already shared so many different biohacks. Is there anything else that you use uh, that is important also for our listeners? There's so many layers that I use. Um, and I think that uh, I think the best thing for our listeners would be to follow me if they want the layers, because there are so many. I actually didn't realize that that uh, I had anything to offer <laughs> anyone. And um, it wasn't until I was asked to talk. Um, I just joined one of these free, uh, a, a, shaman, a shaman, um, a healer, Grace Harris. She's brilliant, by the way. She did a free uh, seminar on speaking from your heart and because I happened to be free that night and had nothing else I thought oh yeah why not I, she invited me personally like sent me a message I thought oh why not and then um, I did that and she, she you are frozen now I can't hear you anymore and then a week later, she was doing the second part of it. And again, I wasn't doing anything, which is why I joined. Went through that process again, and I thought, oh, my goodness, I really need to learn how to speak. And, and it was like, well, what do I speak about? And she's the one who dug it out of me. <laughs> who brought it out of me that you have so much to share and this needs to be shared. And, and I now I just absolutely feel it because this is the prayer that I've been making for years to be of service because I have service. I have carers and I have 
the government takes care of me, my friends, my family. And, but to give back, I didn't think I had anything. And she's the one that kind of pulled that out of me. And now it's like, oh my, and the more I thought about it, I realized, well, this information isn't general knowledge. It's not general knowledge, the differences of a menopausal, perimenopausal woman is and what, how she needs to treat to be, the, what she needs to be aware of. And so, you know, I'm sure the audience has got so many symptoms that they don't even relate to menopause, like the, 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 the mood fluctuations or the, I mean, most people know about the memory loss, you know. And that can be really hard when you can't remember your boss's name and you're in a really high position at work. <laughs> and it must be really frustrating for a woman in that position. But there are so many other menopausal symptoms that that is not even attributed, like the weight gain that is attributed to, to the menopause process. And yeah, so it's become now this need to speak and to to let people know there is a different way. Yeah, absolutely. And also you know, being aware that um, in our society, also the phase of going through the menopause is uh, something that we need to embrace. Often it is like, okay, my body is changing. I don't want that. So give me some, some medicine that I don't feel that. I have to continue my life as usual. But it is the next stage. It's a, the stage of being mature and really understanding, okay, what is the transformation the body is going through and yeah, living this as well, listening to the body, you know, what you already said, understanding what is the transformation I'm going through right now. Because, of course, you know, this is a massive transformation. But in, I see in the Western society, it is kind of just go through that and continue your life. And um, don't talk about that. Get your symptoms under control. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. And, and it's, it, it is a Western condition. It is a condition that uh, because there are some countries that the women don't even have a word for menopause because they don't experience the symptoms that that uh, we're going through in the western countries and so the where you are experiencing those symptoms not necessarily western country the blue zone women they don't experience menopause and or the and when you go back and look at that, well, it's all to do with lifestyle changes. You know, it's all to do with that they have a different lifestyle to what we do. And uh, the biohacks are basically to get us to have a lifestyle like they have um, or as close to hmm. so that we can reduce these, this, these these calls by the body to say, I I really need help here, and um, and there is the uh, about two years ago I joined a biohacking company I partnered with them, and um, and they have a five herb formula that is another biohack that can make a significant difference to, and it's a pill, and it can make a significant difference because we are so bombarded by light, pollution, colorings in our food. We can't go back and live that life that we were able to 300, 200 years ago. We can't do it. We, and we need to survive. And this herbal formula is, it's all natural and it just makes a, a big difference to aging 
reducing that aging, slowing down that process of aging. And uh, yeah, so if anybody, if any of the listeners there are interested in knowing more about that, send me a messenger through Facebook and uh, we, I can talk about that with them. Okay, so um, let us again know uh, where people can find you on Facebook. Uh, say uh, the name again. I just uh, forgot about it. Say it again, please. Re recovering Leopard. Okay. So recovering my flexibility and strength and speed. Um, so it's Recovering Leopard. Uh, so they'll find me on that. And I'm the only one there. No one else is there <laughs> under that name. So... Uh, yeah, I'd love to be able to chat with any of your listeners that want to uh, basically upgrade this or slow down their aging or upgrade their health. Okay, so I will put the link in the sh show notes below. So people, if you want to reach out, this is an easy click and uh, then speak with Nira if you have uh, any questions about biohacking. And thank you so much for being my guest today on this show. Thank you, Swanet. Thank you very much. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening or watching my podcast, Holistic Creators. If you want to know more about how I can help and support you, have a look at my website, spiritualchangemaker.com. You can also join my Facebook group, Spiritual Changemakers Community. Stay tuned for the next episode by subscribing to this channel and you also can check the previous episodes.